Hello again and welcome to another episode in the video series Python for Programmers where we rapidly review the various features that Python provides for people who already know some programming of di different languages, have various levels of experience but want to quickly pick up the features of Python to get going. Okay, so Let's get a start and see where we left off last time. So what we're going to do this time um, is features that are considered particularly Pythonic. That's the word we use for things that are considered uh, particular to Python and the Python way of doing things. Whereas up to now, I focused on the programming language features that could be recognized from many languages that programmers might already be familiar with, whether they're historical or current. So let me start with if we looked at something uh, like a, what we call an iterator that did a range from 1 to 10. And if we printed the range from 1 to 10, it, it just gets a range, but we can iterate over that range. So we could say um, we could append these to a list So do we force it to evaluate? Whoop, typo. Should have noticed that. Okay, so it, it doesn't know what that list is. So although it is a dynamically typed language, it has to know that my range is, is going to be a list. Okay, so I've told it it's a list and then I can append to it because it's mutable and, uh, and then I get a list of numbers by evaluating a range. But uh, we could of course have set my range to be that constant, obviously. But there is a way in Python if actually evaluating that. So we can just say i for i in range okay so Okay, so this says we're going to build a list and it has the iterator here built into it and it generates the list without the slow appending. So it's a declarative form and you'll see that in expression oriented languages. You, uh, those of you who might use something like Mathematica well, from Mathematica will have a feature like that. It's the kind of thing you can do in Haskell and you can see dynamic array declarators like that in things like Algol 68 and perhaps Haskell. So many programmers will have seen that, but the, this form is considered Pythonic. But we can do more with it because that first thing can be an expression. So what if I want to 
to do it as fractions, something like that. So now I can generate 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, 1 over 5, and it knows that it's going to be float, and, and now I've got a list of floats of fractions. So we can do sort of dynamic lists uh, like that. But there's further things uh, that we can do. We can decorate this. So <coughs> we can uh, pick out various things. So these are all called list comprehensions is what Python calls them. So we're going to say I want an array and it's going to be 1 over i for i in range 1 to 10 because I don't want to make it too list. But I can do something else like say I don't want everything in the range so let me knock out even numbers or if i divided by 2 gives me a remainder. Let's see what happens there. Okay. So now we've got one, one third, one fifth, one seventh, one ninth. So I'm able to filter the numbers. Now you also this expression in front, and this is why it's like the other languages that might be expression oriented, can um, contain other things like if statements or method calls. So I've put just a general expression here. But let's say equals the list and if one divided by i So let's say when it's 1, then I want it to report 1. Let me see if I, what shall I do? I not equal to one, then I want one over i for i in range one ten if i percent two equals one. Sorry for my slowness, but I'm writing code on the fly, I'm not copying from a script. Let's see, do I get a syntax error? Oh yes I do. Let me quickly... Uh, <clears throat> so... Let me fix that. No, what I want is... I want 1 over i Yes, that's how I should write it. So I want this expression if i is not equal to 1 in this range. I'm just going to knock out the first one.
okay I've spotted it this has to do both sides of the boolean so this part of the if statement subsets the list this part uh, changes it on the fly so I have to have a true and a false part so what I've said we do 1 over i unless it's 1 where we want the integer so here if the result is integer I just get an integer 1 otherwise I get a float so I got this filters and this part transforms and this is the expression to be returned if it's not transformed so that's a kind of fully fleshed um, way of doing it now I could have we could of course put buried all of this in a method um, or a function and done it that way so I could have done def um, my sorting function put that in there and it returns this one or this one and then I just call the method both ways are equal it depends what's the kind of expression you want as a Python programmer okay so that is list comprehensions so let me um, just put something in there so just to be clear this is a list comprehension so what we're going to do now is to do the same but with dictionary so we can have a similar feature for a dictionary and this time we use the notation for dictionary and it it uses the key value notation and we can similarly write some kind of iterator or numerator here so let's say we, we want to do the same i in the range of 1 to 10 and say we wanted that list to be done as a dictionary uh, lookup so if we make the key i and then the value could be 1 over i and then we've um, created a dictionary So let's hope it manages to print my dictionary. So here now I've got a dictionary between the, with a key, key as the integer which maps on to the fraction as a float. So basically it's the same example as I did before but showing how we can create a dictionary using this iterator. And similarly we can put filters in place so in my dictionary iterator I could copy the same filter that just picks some values and I could put the same Okay, silly me. Let's copy this piece and put it in here. And I end up with the same as I did in the list comprehensions, but I've kind of just shown you how it might work as a dictionary comprehension. So we've got key, a colon, and the value, and then we have the generating expression or the iterator 
that generates this on the fly. So that's a particular Pythonic uh, feature um, and on a well-written Python program you should see those. So why do we, do we want to do them instead of a loop, which might be the way an orthodox programmer thinks? Well, because it enables the compiler to generate better code, knows what you're doing. It can't see what you're trying to create here because you've explained it in statement steps. And here, in one statement, you've expressed the outcome that you want, can, so this can be optimized by the compiler. Basically, you've done a dynamic declaration of the thing you want it to make, the data structure. So comprehensions are considered much better in Python um, if you wish to generate a list or a di dictionary on the fly algorithmically from some values. Okay. So that's probably enough for uh, this time slot. And um, so I think in the future steps or, or episodes, we will start digging into more features of Python that will be needed by the much more experienced programmers. And if you've only been programming a short time or only know a small number of languages, they might be new for you, but still good to learn. Uh, you'll discover that Python has features that enable you to express yourself um, in the same way as some of the more powerful languages out there. Okay, so see you in the next episode, and I hope you found that useful.